Thank you so much for inviting us here at the ministry and also for your time in this interview, Minister Kim. Uh, very nice to see you and thank you for coming to my ministry. Okay, so great news. Um, after it was first, uh, you know, elected as the rotating member, this is the second time mm. uh, that Korea is now holding a two-year seat at the UN Security Council. Um, first of all, having this seat, what does this mean for Korea? Uh, thank you for your congratulations. And uh, you remember that we were elected in 1995. That's right. And uh, at that time, it was only four years after we joined the United Nations itself. And Korea was not experienced, and uh, we didn't have many chances to participate in UN activities. And since then, we have actively participated in UN activities, including PKO and we have increased our ODA. So election this time means uh, international community recognize uh, our contribution to the international community and also uh, to some extent the expectation of international community for further contribution has been also reflected. So two rounds of voting need to take place, right, mm -hmm. for the five non-permanent members to be voted in. Now, Korea won quite a big amount of the votes. It was unanimous, over yeah. two-thirds. Mm -hmm. Were you confident? Did you, were you confident in knowing that Korea? <laughs> <laughs> uh, frankly, uh, I was uh, confident that uh, in the end we would prevail. Mm -hmm. So we expected a second round of voting as well. And, but uh, my president, uh, when he meets with uh, his counterparts from abroad, he always raises this issue, and so did I. And uh, even I met with 40, 40 ministers during the United Nations General Assembly session, and uh, Ambassador Kim in New York, he made his own efforts. And all these efforts were very carefully orchestrated and well coordinated. So I was confident that uh, we would win. Yes. Right. Your confidence was for good reason because uh, we did, right? Yeah. Now, the UN Security Council, a very core body in the United Nations, mm -hmm. could you tell us a little bit about what kind of role it plays and how exactly does it operate? I mean, the primary responsibility of the United Nations Security Council is to maintain peace and security in the world. And uh, it can, I mean, the United Nations Security Council is the only organization which can make uh, legally binding decisions over member states, which mm -hmm. means they can impose sanctions and they can endorse use of forces against a member state. Right. So uh, it is very important organization. And uh, uh, there are uh, 15 member states in the Security Council. And as you know, uh, out of 15, mm -hmm. five are permanent members. That's right. And uh, on procedural matters, usually uh, we need uh, nine votes. And on other important issues for international peace and security, we need also nine votes. But there should be no objection from permanent members. So that's what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So even one veto from the permanent members, that's it's right. enough, that's right? right. Yeah. So um, a big name when we mention United Nations, of course, mm -hmm. we have to talk about the Secretary General, <laughs> yes. and, uh, yeah. Pan Ki-moon. He's mm -hmm. the former Foreign Minister of Korea, so we're very proud to have that. Now, he started as a Secretary General in 2006, That's and right. we saw another unanimous mm -hmm. re-election, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and he will be serving till 2016. That's right. So uh, what did you think, or what does this symbolize for Korea for his re-election? Well, when he was uh, re-elected last year, it means member states uh, recognized uh, his dedication, leadership, and hard work. So together with our joining the Security Council, uh, it boosted our standing in the international organizations. But uh, I want to say one thing, that we should bear in mind that uh, we should not expect any preferential treatment Favoritism. by Secretary General, because mm -hmm. he's not representing Korea. Right. He's working as the Secretary General for the whole humankind and for the whole world. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, even if you read a lot of articles and whatnot, there is a lot of scrutiny regarding that with Korea now as That's a part right. of the council. Mm -hmm. But uh, we trust that, of course, it will be fair, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, political analysts are also saying, with Korea being reelected, this mm -hmm. is showing how much Korea has advanced as a nation. And you were talking about how the first time we were elected, mm -hmm. um, we had no idea. We were like just emerging, uh, right out of you know, out of um, some tough times that the country mm -hmm, foresaw. Mm -hmm. We're a lot more experienced now. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you agree that uh, this is international status? Korea has gained quite a notch there. Yes, uh, from that on, uh, as I said already, mm -hmm. um, we have arisen from the ashes of the war, and uh, uh, we achieved both uh, economic growth and uh, democratization for the last several decades. So we can give a good example. And many countries, uh, they can benchmark us. So it's a good point. And uh, also, we are in a unique position to communicate with both developed countries and developing countries. So we can uh, contribute uh, to the international community in that sense as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be a great opportunity for middle powers to really step that's up, That's right, right, that's right. Um, with Korea now having this seat here, uh, mm -hmm. granted it's a non-permanent seat, we're hoping to have a bigger, louder voice at the table on major issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, of course, one of the issues closest to our hearts is that of North Korea. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, precisely. Uh, you remember that when our Chonanham was attacked in 2010, that issue was uh, discussed in the United Nations Security Council. Even though we had uh, friends and allies in the Security Council, we couldn't participate ourselves there. We should depend on the help and assistance of our friends. So uh, we couldn't directly handle that issue, but uh, now we are there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can directly involved in the debate and discussion, and even we can draft resolution or statement there. So I believe uh, the, our presence in the Security Council itself has the effect of deterring North Korean provocation. Mm -hmm. And other than that, we can participate in discussions and debates on many regional issues as well. Mm. So, the, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because it's not just North Korea. We're seeing, you know, problems or conflict in Syria, Pakistan, mm -hmm. That's right. um, That's Libya right. is another mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the United Nations, the Security Council, they established a peacekeeping mission mm -hmm. regarding Libya, yes. and with Korea joining, of course, it's going mm -hmm. to play a more active role in mm -hmm. taking part mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about um, this international dispute resolution, resolution and how mm -hmm. it works? Uh, Sometimes uh, this resolution is binding and sometimes not. But uh, when the security is threatened, uh, usually the Security Council, they issued a statement and the resolution is binding. Right. So in case of a North Korean resolution, it is binding one. Right. So every member state, they should uh, abide by all these uh, contents of the resolutions. And in Syrian case, unfortunately, because of a veto by some member state there, uh, they couldn't make a binding resolution for that. So sometimes it happens, but usually uh, the resolutions or statement uh, from Security Council, all member states, they should abide by. Yeah. So Korea will start its role in January as a part of the UN Security Council, but we it's also going to hold the rotating presidency in That's right. February. That's right. Yeah. And um, it works in alphabetical order with the five newly elected mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. have Argentina, Australia, Luxembourg, and of course Rwanda. That's right. mm -hmm. So um, what kind of role will uh, we be playing as this rotating presidency of the council? Uh, president, uh, I mean, president's country, uh, it has uh, various tasks there. But I think the most important one is to facilitate the work of the council so that it can operate seamlessly. And uh, the president, he can convene meetings and also he can set the agenda. And this uh, convening power is very important in responding situations which is occurring all over the world. Mm -hmm. 
If he doesn't convene, we cannot discuss. So uh, this convening power is very important. And also he represents uh, Security Council against other uh, United Nations organizations because there are so many organizations in the United Nations of system. Course. So, uh, and, and also the one more thing if I add, uh, if opinions of the Security Council member states are divided, uh, he can play a role of moderator or facilitator to bridge the gap uh, among countries. So essentially, it could definitely play a role in affecting the outcome of these that's meetings, right, that's depending right. how it's moderated, yes, right? Yes, yes. Then um, you talked about the importance of convening, coming together to gather mm -hmm. and talk about issues, mm -hmm. but what is exactly on the agenda? Uh, last year, according to statistics from United Nations, mm -hmm. two-thirds of the urgent items discussed in the Security Council were regional issues like as you mentioned, Pakistan, Libya, and Syria. And at the moment, I think uh, the most pressing uh, issue is situation in Syria. And in addition to these regional issues, uh, some thematic issues like uh, PKO and non-proliferation, that issues are also discussed there. So Iranian case, Iranian nuclear issue or uh, North Korea nuclear issue, they can be discussed in the Security Council as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, these Iranian case and uh, uh, North Korean case is both they can be thematic issue and at the same time it's a regional issue as well. So all these issues are uh, discussed there. And because of that, uh, they have almost a meeting every day. So, uh, for example, last year, I know that they had uh, around uh, 235 official meetings. Wow. Yeah, so if uh, we add unofficial meetings and briefings at the various it's levels, like every then, day. Uh, yeah, almost every day. So that's why it is very tiring work, but it's very uh, rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are kind of excited to see maybe changes or what kind of potential changes will be made because the dynamics of the Security mm -hmm, Council mm -hmm. is definitely changing with these new countries That's and countries right. like Turkey and Brazil leaving, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we shall look forward mm -hmm, to the outcomes. Mm -hmm. But um, you, we mentioned Pan Ki moon and mm -hmm. about how there's not going to be favoritism. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to elaborate a little bit on that, especially with um, Korea. While it holds the rotating presidency, a lot mm -hmm. of people are saying, mm -hmm. is there going to be close cooperation then? That's right, that's right. Uh, well, in doing work in the Security Council, cooperation between President and the Secretary General is very important. Uh, but as you can imagine, we can expect uh, like um, close coordination and cooperation with the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. So we can call it, in Korean terms, <laughs> perfect fit. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> yeah, we can fit perfectly, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. At least there will be no language barriers for that. Well, but uh, when we meet with the Secretary it's General, we use Korean. English because, uh, <laughs> uh, as I said, he's not uh, representing Korean. Exactly. And uh, all other staff members are not Koreans. He's working with uh, uh, people from all countries, mm -hmm. so we usually use uh, English and uh, Secretary General, I know that he speaks good French as well. Mm. Yeah, he's a working language for him as well. Very yes. linguistically gifted that's right, there. That's right. Okay, well, um, we have Korea now and we talked about a lot of uh, different factors that uh, this new role mm -hmm. will entail. But more specifically to our nation, what are some resolutions that we're going to be holding? What are some expectations that we can have with mm -hmm. uh, this uh, seat? Well, I mean, if we do not make any statement or resolution, that's the best case. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reality is not the case. So we have to be prepared in advance. And now we know the potential issues and threats all over the world. So now we are trying to prepare our own position on all issues. So I established my own task force here in the ministry, mm -hmm. and uh, we are discussing how to make uh, our positions and how to uh, express uh, our position while not having some negative effect on our bilateral relations with some countries. Yeah. Mm. That's what we are doing now. I see. So uh, you will be quite busy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> you can imagine. Right, yes, yes. right. 
Well, some critics say that um, a lot of these countries with that are a part of the UN Security Council, of mm -hmm. course, they have their own agendas, right? That's right. That's and right. And issues that are closer to uh, mm -hmm. their nation's well-being. But uh, like you said, we trust that the mm -hmm. Security Council will represent the world mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, maintain peace and um, stability all, right. all across that's the right. board. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very mm -hmm. much for your time today, and mm -hmm. uh, we wish Korea the best of luck for the next yeah, two years. Yeah, we'll, we'll do our best. Yeah, thank you. Very nice thank to you see you.